So, good morning, everyone. I would like to thank Thiago's invitation to come to this workshop. So, I found it marvelous, and then I started to panic, but um, uh, it was and uh, it is a very, a very generous invitation because it also represents <coughs> the possibility of hearing Professor Arlata's lecture yesterday and to think of what kind of questions I ask myself and would like to share with Professor Alates and you. Since, as Professor Alates said yesterday, one of the big challenges is really to escape the trap of just trying to translate into other languages the same Eurocentric view of the world. Well, the problem is that I will talk about the Eurocentric situation and I'm very interested in hearing Professor Alates' opinion on that. I'm going to talk about the so-called gender ideology, a label given to gender questions mostly by the Catholic Church and by conservative political parties, and about what I consider to be a relationship between the critique of this ideology and nationalism. The critique of the so-called gender ideology is growing in different parts of the world nowadays, as I was saying, Inside Christianity, especially inside Catholicism, it is part of the discourse of official documents, and here I want to, to emphasize this, what I'm talking about <coughs> documents issued by the Vatican and repeated critically by many bishops' conferences in different countries. So this is the corpus of the text I've, I've, I will speak about. This critique exists also outside of the Christian canon, as I've said, um, but actually, gender is used nowadays also by the radical right-wing parties in Europe as a stage for the re-emergency of nationalisms and fundamentalisms, but also by some feminists in an opposite way, also to justify the exclusion of others, something that uh, Mark touched also. So, the foundation of European progressive studies, <coughs> in a research published in 2015, speaks of the use of gender as a symbolic glue that integrates anti-European Union, anti-liberal, anti-communist and homophobic attitudes, attitudes which can produce voters for the rightists. In the case of the far-right anti-government, anti-immigrants attitudes are also included discourses on gender. On the other hand, I would say, uh, there are also feminists that use gender not as a glue, but as a line to define who is able to be considered a good or a bad migrant. For instance, in Holland, the process of integration of a migrant includes the evaluation of his or her tolerance and approval of same-sex marriage or LGBTI movements. In France, there are feminist movements that consider the use of the veil as something impossible to match with human rights, just to give uh, examples. So this would be the main topic I would like to present and about which I'm very interested in hearing your opinions. The existence of manipulations of gender questions according to xenophobic and nationalist approaches. It goes without saying <coughs> that the critique of gender ideology, together with the strong statements on the Christian roots of Europe, as if Christianity was born in Europe, something we have already uh, spoke about, performed by radical right-wing parties in Europe gained a new momentum with the topic of refugees. There are several countries in Europe, uh, for instance, Italy, Poland, Hungary, Slovakia, that refuse the entrance of refugees because they are not Christians. So the topic of gender and the topic of religion are combined in order to legitimize this process of urban. It seems to me that the link between both topics has to do with nationalism, as I will try to explain. However, <clears throat> we should keep in mind that we are talking about a complex situation that requires complex analysis. On one hand, right-wing radicals claim the so-called Christian identity of Europe and bring these roots together with the critique discourse and practice against what they consider the gender ideology not the one from the church, because I think that the church has its own gender ideology <coughs> that gets into it, that clashes against the, what they consider to be a, a, the gender ideology. <coughs> On the other hand, 
Uh, we also have to recognize that there are Christian people engaged in exposing these connections, explicitly disagreeing with the way the Catholic Church criticizes what she considers to be a gender ideology, and involving themselves in emancipatory movements totally against radical right-wing parties. So that's why I said at the beginning that I was talking about documents and the kind of documents I would talk about. Why and how is it possible to bring together a radical refusal of otherness with gender and with religion? Actually, it seems to me that the Catholic Church, in its official documents about what is considered the gender ideology, creates a room for this refusal. To put it in a very rough way, and according to the words of a radical right-wing voter <coughs> in Germany, who told, was talking to me about it, belonging to IFDs, so this alternative of your Deutschland, and I'm quoting what he said, and what he said actually um, is, reflects what IFD thinks. Refugees come to Europe to rape U European women, slaughter European children, reproduce themselves so that in the future Europe will be conquered by Islam and there will be more mosques than church. And all of this happens because feminist critic of men turn German men weak. They are not able to defend our women no more. Actually, some of them do not want to be men no more. Now, of course, we don't find this uh, rough interpretation in the documents <coughs> of the Catholic Church concerning gender questions. In fact, one of the main discourse strategies used by the Catholic Church to talk about what is considered gender ideology, the one that weakens men, according to the, uh, this IFD voter, is talking about women and not about women and men. Why? Actually, when Vatican documents about, uh, present a radical critique of what they consider to be a construction that does not match with God's creation of men and women, they are especially focused on women. They are critical of what they call a denial of differences. So for the Catholic Church documents, the damages resulting from what it is considered to be a denial of differences created by God the construction of sexual identity is a choice, in their own words, and not according to a nature given by God, have serious impacts upon family and inside family upon women. In the late month of March, the, per the permanent observer of the Holy See in the United Na Nations, the Archbishop Hauser, in a side seminary called, and the title was chosen by the Vatican, Gender Equality and Gender Ideology, Protecting <coughs> Women and Girls. Uh, so they define, uh, uh, the Archbishop defined women uh, after saying that uh, when the United uh, Nations uh, started, it was clear what a woman, to be a woman meant, nowadays no one knows. And after that he defined women as the approximately half of the human race born with the capacity of mother for motherhood with two X chromosomes with particular physical, hormonal and relational traits that distinguish them from the approximate other half of the human race, men. There are no official documents of the Vatican defining <coughs> men as the other half with their appropriate chromosomes, physical, hormonal and relational traits. From this point of view, it seems the documents are still at the level of what Simone Weil considered to be the need to define women, since it is as if when you talk of men, you are automatically talking about human beings. Women are the ones you have to, be, you have to define. Uh, actually, women are the ones that have to be defined. They are human beings, but you need to explain that they have specific features, so they have specific kind of human beings. The quotation of the Archbishop Hauser reproduces the interconnected features usually used by these documents to talk about women. Biologic features linked with motherhood, naturalization of differences resulting from the ascription of this role to women, motherhood is the most important plan of God for women, the belief in the direct access to nature as if culture is the enemy of nature. 
This is at the core of the Catholic Church critique of gender ideology. Since the documents consider an ideology everything that goes against God's plan, and God's plan is equal to nature, according to the documents, as if the understanding of nature was not the cultural reading of it. It seems clear that when the Catholic Church is criticizing what they consider to be an ideological approach, since gender is the cultural reading of nature, according to which there are certain roles given to women, special motherhood, and other roles implicitly given to men, because they are not explained, the Church is blind to its own ideology, because she always had and still has a prescriptive, prescriptive <coughs> discourse on women that puts in God the origin of a social, political, cultural, economic order in which women are subaltern. The despair of the Catholic Church in face of gender discourses and of the assertive vindication of the rights to define one's, uh, one's own identity results from the recognition that this is a sign of the fall of the patriarchal order and the fall of that social order discussed in the academic, social and cultural debates, but also in social emancipatory movements <coughs> linked with the definition of one's own sexual and emotional identity is considered to be a catastrophe, not only by the church, but also by these radical right-wing parties in Europe and in other parts of the world. It seems to me that this is because of what Yuval Davis says uh, that are uh, considered to be the role of women. So women are seen as the carriers of the burden of the nation. They are the ones that will give birth to the next national generation. If women stop having children because their identity is biased, and so now I'm putting myself, uh, I, I think it's clear, so in the kind of reasoning of these documents and not my own. So uh, if, uh, if women stop having children because their identity is biased as a consequence of the feminist critique of the roles traditionally assigned to them and men are not men, because the discourses and practices based upon new forms of ascribing identity to themselves, namely in LGBTY movements, then the continuity of the, of the nation um, the continuity of nations rooted in Christianity will be in danger and Europe will lose its identity. So I would like to ask Professor Alatas and uh, everybody, if you think that this kind of speech, critical towards gender categories and emphasizing religious identity as a way of reinforcing national identities is also relevant or not in other parts of the world. Thank you very much.